at the Allegretto. This is a little Allegretto, a piece by Mauro Giuliani. And Giuliani is one of the greats, one of the great guitar composers. He's actually credited with putting the guitar music so that the thumb, uh, the thumb notes have the stem down and the melody notes have the stem up so that we can all put by. So putting it on the staff, it makes sense in the way that we take it for granted today. That's his brainchild. So thanks, Mauro. Let's just take a look at this. So this is of course very small and you can probably hardly see it, but this is a this is a basically a one pager. And what's great about this piece is that it's not, it's basically A minor and E7 going back and forth, but it's just this one big momentum, this one big impulse. We just hit the first note and go boom, and it just it just rides the entire time. It never uh, lets up energy. It's just one big energetic ball of movement all the way to the very end and then it sits down. It's really great writing and it's in the kind of the upper beginning, lower intermediate range. But of course we say that, but then as you get more advanced, if you are playing musically, then everything you can make as hard as you want to. So this is actually, you can play this as a very advanced piece and or do it as an advanced study in musicality and phrasing and everything else. But it also allows that while the notes aren't all that hard to learn because they're all in the first position mainly. We jump up to the high A a little bit here, but that's it. So there is a little bit of jumping up, just a couple of frets, but there are no bar chords or anything like that. And so there's many people, could, you could probably play this piece because it doesn't take a whole lot of um, prior technical chops to play it. That said, we make everything difficult if we want to, to make it more beautiful. So just taking a look at it, there are no repeats, right? We're in 4-4 time and there are no repeats and we just go right along through the entire piece and all the way to, to the end. There are, if we, if we look closely at this, it goes back and forth between scales and, and arpeggio shapes. And so some scale arpeggio da 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 scale da 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 and then arpeggio da 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 scale scale stuff scale stuff arpeggio scale so it constantly goes back arpeggio arpeggio um arpeggio scale scale so i mean it's constantly going between scale and arpeggio which makes it very exciting it's, a, uh, it's kind of like a question and answer type thing, something that's being constantly interrupted, like there's an urgency of something that just needs to happen, and so it's, it's constantly moving forward. Really, really great writing in that way. We often have these places where the melody is, is offset, da, boom, boom, da, da, boom, boom, da, da, that sort of thing, and it's, or um, ba, um, ba, um, ba, um, ba, bass melody, bass melody, bass melody, bass melody. Say that three times really fast. Of course, in this course, we don't do it as one big thing, right? Because that's no way to learn. So what we then do is we take it section by section and we look at each section in detail. The sections are about two measures long and we look at how is this going to work and how are we going to handle this bass line? And what are the dynamics right here? And what's the, we talk a lot about right hand in this course. We talk a lot about the intentionality of the right hand because that's probably the biggest uh, challenge of this piece is that the right hand is constantly changing. Well, we'll figure, have to figure out how to actually play each piece so that whenever we get it at tempo, boom, and it's just the thing is just like da, 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 moving right along that our fingers don't get all tied in knots and pretzeled out that we can then have um, the, the beautiful flowing music that we want to. Also in this piece, we talk a lot about how to let notes over ring so that the, the melody, so. Um, so that the melody comes over and, and under itself and it sounds like multiple people playing. These are the main, main issues of the piece. We also talk a lot in this course about ease of the body and so as we've work with something difficult like a right hand fingering or something intentional like a right hand fingering that after we learn it and brain it out, um, use our brain so heavily on it, concentrate on it, then we need to just relax and practice it hands separately with this ease and fluidity into it so that when we put everything together it can be this beautiful thing. And so we talk a lot about dynamics, we talk about, a lot about the hands separately in this one. So 
I hope that you will enjoy this course on the Allegretto. It is a really fun piece and really exciting as you, as you learn it. So have fun, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.